On today's Fit to Eat, I'll be preparing turkey sliders on sweet potatoes with a Moroccan salad. My guest is MPB Radio's grassroots host, Bill Ellison. Registered dietitian Rebecca Turner has some interesting information about salt. It's going to be a great show, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Fit to Eat. I'm your host, Rob Stinson. My guest today is the host of MPB Radio's Grassroots, Bill Ellison. Bill, welcome to the show. Thank you, Rob. Glad to be here. Hey, I understand you're like a gourmet chef, so mm. this one I just don't even need to do anything, right? No way, no way, no way. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Got to have a little bit of fun, you know? There you go. Anyhow, this is going to be a fun one. So very kind of unorthodox what we're doing, but we are going to make little baby turkey sliders. Ooh. The bun, the bun is going to be these beautiful little sweet potato rounds. And then we're going to have kind of a Moroccan style salad that we're going to make together. And a nice little dill sauce that's going to end it. It's going to be really kind of fun. Yeah, sounds delicious. Got all the colors in there, too. Yeah, that's and I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll call on you only for the necessary things so you won't have to mix or okay. do any of the difficult okay. work. However now, I can help. Not a problem. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do we're using quinoa, which is a great starch, healthy, kind of gluten-free. So you take it and we mix it with two ounces of vegetable stock. This is salt-free, okay. fat-free. Then you put the quinoa in and literally you kind of set it and forget it. <laughs> We're going to put it right over here okay. and just turn it on a low heat. I can just watch it, right? And that's, uh, yeah, and you don't, you don't actually do anything with it. Because it'll cook, and I already have taken the liberty. I have some already cooked. Ah. So it's very simple, but I want to at least show people how easy it is. And here's the difference. Using water is great, but it's tasteless. So you put in a good vegetable stock where it's got flavor, but you find one that really has no salt and no fat. Gotcha. Gotcha. Makes, makes, it, kind of, makes it a much better way to go. So come on over here. We're going to have right. a little bit of fun trying to put together all this. What we're going to do, this is some beautiful ground turkey. And you notice there's one big piece? Right. That little piece is going to be for you, so you ah, can try it. That'll work. I figured, you know, have a little fun, and that of way course. you get to sample some of the food. Now we're going to add in about a teaspoon of some gluten-free breadcrumbs just to give a kind of thickening to it. Black pepper. We got to kick it up a little bit, so we're putting yeah. in some jalapenos. Oh, a little spice. Yeah, just some in some fresh jalapenos. They're so good. Now, onion and garlic powder have no salt, oh. so you can add a lot of flavor using both of them. Kind of give because you know the one thing, and this is the onion. Onion is whiter, and the garlic is a little bit yellower. Gotcha. The biggest difference between that is you have no salt, and at the same point, you can put some flavor into turkey, which is pretty bland. Right. Right. All right. So enough about me and cooking. Let's talk a little bit. I mean, the longest running radio show on MPB, That's if right. I'm not mistaken. That's huh? right. Grassroots was one of the original MPB Think Radio shows when the uh, station, the network, came on the air in the early 1980s. I've hosted the show since May of 1992. So, wow. come May, I'll have 26 years behind That's the fine, mic. Man, I got to shake your hand. Absolutely. That. Yeah, That's love every week of it. That's incredible. Well, let me. Uh, last piece we're putting in there is a little egg white. So then, all we're going to do is just kind of mix this whole solution up. And guess what? This is going to be your job. Oh, okay. So, so just all you got to do up. is just kind of mix it together, and you can set it. You so can it'll actually. Be... You can. I, I'm going to tell you. You can put it right there in the middle if right. you want to set it down. So it'll be like it won't a, be in the way. Like a salad, like a yeah, it's not just, a chicken it's salad, end up but being a turkey like a salad. It'll end up being something we're going to make into three little patties. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, on the other side, what I'm going to start in the front is going to be the browning of our sweet potatoes because they'll take the longest of anything we have to cook. 
And uh, the idea of using sweet potatoes instead of bread is just so much healthier. Oh, yeah. And I love sweet potatoes. Yeah, me I hope too. you like them. Absolutely. All right, love so. Them. My dogs gonna... like them, too. Do they really? <laughs> yeah, they do. That's kind of funny. Now, yeah. that's a new one to me. All right, so we're going to put these, season with a little pepper. You know why I put a little pepper on them? No. See how easy they move around the pan? Ah, okay. They won't stick because we're going to have plenty of flavor in the burger that's, you know, going going inside of these. But it really does help a little bit. So then I take a little touch of oil on each one, just like this, so when we flip them, they won't stick. Am and I doing I, this right, Rob? It, it looks great. You're actually doing great. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, 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 you really are. Okay, you really good. are. I'm good. sorry. Good. All right, yeah, I kind of left you on your own there. But you're doing great. I, I, that's the reason I left you on your own. It I'm, looks so darn good. I'm not real confident cooking. Well, just have to tell you. I, you know what? Then, then I think this will be especially fun. There you go. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of how I look at it. You can laugh at me. Well, I've and had people in here who me. really know what they're doing, and I've had other people. I'm going to move behind okay. you and just turn that heat off. Once it gets up to a boil, when you're doing brown rice or quinoa or any of those starches, you get it up to a boil and you turn it off. You leave it covered, and it will just naturally cook, and you can't burn it that okay. way. Yeah. That so that's sense. what's going on on the other gotcha. side. Gotcha. Now. What I'm going to do with this is trade pans, kind of put this over here, and then I'm going to keep putting you to work. Okay. Don't maybe, mind. Look, maybe when we're done, you'll you'll actually be cooking. I you might know, learn that, something. That could, that could be kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to put a little oil. This pan is a little warm. And then I'm going to reach in front of here. Let me just turn this burner on, a little light, low burn. And we've got those potatoes going. I get and I tell you what, no, you've done great. No, That's perfect. We're good? That's perfect. Because what we really want is to have, when we're done, four equal-sized little, little mini kind of slider patties. And, and turkey is so healthy. And this is some turkey breast that's been ground. So it's even healthier. Sometimes you got to be careful. And I, I tell people this when they're watching the show. Sometimes when you go in the store and you buy turkey, it could be the entire turkey right. ground up. Right. There's nothing healthy about that. So I really urge people to find out, okay, what is the ground turkey you have? You don't want mechanically separated turkey. No, you, uh, you, know, you really don't. And, and we, you know, we're joking about it right now, but let me tell you, a lot of places that is what's there. Yep. We're yep. going to take a little Not bit good. extra off of this. So that we have equal, because you got to have at least a real patty. Yeah. I'm not doing the sweet potatoes for you. We'll try that at the end. But this way you can get an idea of what these actually taste like. And that's delicious stuff. So, so anyhow, good. so let's talk a little bit about music and how you got started. Where did this all begin for you? Because you've been doing it so long. Yeah, I guess in school band. Bailey Junior High, Jackson, Mississippi. Played the trombone. Oh, really? Yeah. I was a trumpet player. Oh, were you? Okay. All through junior high and high school. Brass players stick together. Unbelievable. Yeah, played the trombone through college, picked up the guitar, then discovered bluegrass when the uh, Will the Circle Be Unbroken album came out in 1973. About the same time, I started doing radio, so it all kind of blended together, and I've done it ever since. No kidding. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. I, uh, I had the good fortune of being a... Uh, a radio DJ in my college days, and I just thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever uh, seen. I did then, and still do. Well, you know, it just now you see how these look. They're per we haven't touched them. That's the key. Uh, I try to impress that on people, moving them around, changing them around. It, they'll never seal. Gotcha. And what this does is seals all the juices in. That makes sense. And and they'll get crispy, and yet they'll be tender in the middle. So they make the perfect bun, if you would, which is, is obviously an atypical way yeah. of doing it, but it makes it kind of fun. So now we're going to turn the heat up on these turkey. So band, music, radio. Yeah, uh, and it's funny, we were talking about Grassroots being one of the original programs on MPB. The original host was a guy named Mike Morgan. He hosted the show for probably six, seven years. Well, when he got to uh, ready to move on, he called me and he said, look, you're a, you're a bluegrass musician and you're a radio guy. You're the logical Choice. guy to take over. Yeah, are you interested? And I said, absolutely. And I how, took the job and never funny. looked back. That's fantastic. Yeah, it was great. I, was, I, I, I love it every week. I, I've never... Not enjoyed a week of grassroots, I'll just tell you. Well, you know, I think, I think that's a great thing when it, it's kind of what happened. I was not in school to be a restaurateur. 
last right. thing on my mind. But I was always working in restaurants when I was in school. Yeah. You know, I did the DJ thing, but I was really working in a restaurant bar the whole time. To write, make and real just, money. Yeah, and it, <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's funny because it got into my system, and when I graduated school, was going to graduate school, it just, I just realized I really want to be in the restaurant business, and yeah. that's how that got started. So let's talk a little bit about health, because this show now, seven years going, really got going off of what I thought was kind of a, a funny, you know, idea of trying to be healthy in right. Mississippi. Now it is such a priority. It's so important. And obviously you stay in shape. So talk about what you eat or how you like to find food that's healthy. How do you do that? Well, I, I just try to be consistent. I, I, I tell my kids when we talk about this thing, you, you, you can't be perfect all year long. You're going to fall off the wagon some. You're going to uh, have periods through the holidays or whatever when you eat like you shouldn't eat, but right. just jump back on, get back into your groove, and you'll be fine. I've been fortunate that my wife is an excellent cook, knows how to cook healthy, select healthy foods, so that helped me a lot. Well, you I said you weren't the cook, no, so I'm, I'm definitely assuming not the cook. there had to be another yeah. side to that one. Well, I just try to, you know, you got all these colors over here. I do use that simple formula. I eat a lot of, I want green food, I want yellow food, I want uh, orange food. If and, you do that, and, you, and you, you know what? It's a great idea. I've got a friend that lives here in Jackson who tells her her grandchildren, you want some candy food. Right. And candy food would be red bell pepper, green bell pepper. She pan sears it. She puts a little bit of honey just to entice yep. them with good natural local honey, which is not a bad thing. And they love it. Yep. I watched them, and they're coming in, and it's in the fridge already cooked in strips. And they will pick at that instead of eating potato That's chips. That's their treat, yeah. I mean, unbelievable. What yeah. a great way to train them. Whatever you know? it takes to get them those well, fruits I mean, and veggies. That that didn't happen in my era. You know? No, mine either. I mean, we just didn't see that. Now, we did have raisins in the refrigerator, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, weren't my favorites. But. I'm going to say, I mean, you know, people ate oatmeal. Some of the stuff that people are doing today back then. Yeah. Quite a while ago, unfortunately, yeah. in my case and yours probably. We're probably close to the same age. But you know what? What I've really noticed is the trends now, if it starts early in a child's life, they will adopt it and it just sticks with them, right. you know? So it's great that your kids are doing that. I've been eating uh, oatmeal in smoothies. I just discovered that. Somebody said, dump your, dump your oatmeal oh, in there. It really it, gives them It makes them it a, rich and it yeah. gives it a great flavor. Great flavor, kind of a... You, you know what that's like? They use whey powder, which is that protein right, powder. Right. Well, it's almost the same thing. But you don't have that unusual flavor. Some people don't like that right. flavor of the protein. Right. That's, that's a great way yeah, to do it. It works great. Well, these, these appear are, to be doing very well. Look great. Our sweet potatoes are doing very well. We've got quite a bit of stuff, you know, that I like to talk about as well, kind of thinking about where is the future of music going here in Mississippi. You know, people don't realize the history of music that's here. And, you know, I moved here from New Orleans, and people in New Orleans act like, well, they, we're the king of music. And, boy, I tell you what, I love the music experience in Absolutely. Mississippi. I'm glad Mississippi is finally tooting their horn and uh, using the phrase birthplace of America's music. Right. You know, Jimmy Rogers, father of country music, B.B. King, king of the blues, Elvis Presley, king of rock and roll. Right. What else is there? What, I mean, there, there truly isn't anything right. else. Right. You know, and it amazes me that people don't know that. No, they don't. That's they, why we need really to tell don't. them. No, I, I agree, man, and that's why you're out there <laughs> doing right. it. And I think it's a wonderful thing. You know, I've got a lot of friends in the music business, and it's ironic, but they're aware of it, but yet the general public really doesn't know. They're coming around, though. I think people are learning. You know, we get yeah. a lot of European tourism in, on the blues trail. That yeah. stuff like that. That's Isn't what it great, it's, though? Yep. Absolutely. It's a fantastic thing. Well, listen, if you're interested in any of the recipes that we're doing today, you visit our website at mpbonline.org slash fit to eat every recipe will be there and you can actually watch yours truly making those recipes so we're at a point right now where we're going to take a little bit of a break we're going to end up going to registered dietitian my dear friend rebecca turner she's got some really interesting information on salt in your everyday foods we'll be right back
Did you know that most of us get more sodium through our diet daily than we need? Recommendations from the American Heart Association and the U.S. government range from about 1,500 to 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day. That's about a teaspoon. Now, why should you be concerned about the amount of sodium you consume through food or beverages? Well, excess dietary sodium is one of the risk factors for high blood pressure, which can turn into cardiovascular disease, such as hypertension. Now, hypertension is considered the silent killer because often you go years with elevated blood pressure without knowing it until mm, a stroke or a heart attack occurs. You need to do more than ease up on the salt shaker on your table. You may be shocked by some of the foods that are high in salt. Frozen dinners, yep, they're quick, they're easy, and they are loaded with sodium. Even your ready-to-eat cereals, check out the nutrition fact panels. Some brands have up to 210 milligrams of sodium in each cup. Vegetable juices may help you get about two to two and a half cups of veggies you need every day, but they can have a lot of sodium. One cup of vegetable juice cocktail has 615 milligrams of sodium. Now canned vegetables are easy and offer a cost-effective way to get your vegetables, but they also have sauces and seasonings that add extra sodium. But here's a tip. Rinse canned veggies thoroughly and look for labels that say no salt added or low sodium. And check the freezer section where you may have more luck finding an unsalted choice. Packaged deli meats often have salt content on the package that would stop you in your tracks. Just two ounces of sliced turkey can have over 500 milligrams of sodium. Take time to read all your labels and make sure your choice is fit to eat. Well, I tell you what, welcome back. I tell you what, is the aroma good or it's what? It's very good. I Those mean, signs. I know, I know. I'm gonna make this little dill sauce in a few minutes and then I'm gonna give you a sample. That'll work. So at that point, you'll get to actually try this. But what we're gonna do in the meantime is embark on this, I call it kind of a Moroccan salad, just cause some of the items are, but it's really a beautiful blend of flavor. So where we're gonna start is with just the tiniest bit of oil, not even a teaspoon. Okay. Uh, you know, and I know you're not a cook, right. per se. The one thing we watch, no salt, virtually no fat, because it's the two things that are killing us, right. you know? So I really focus in to try and make sure that whatever we're doing, we use as little as possible. And it's really easy. It doesn't make it any harder what to do What kind of that oil way. is it? That is a little bit of canola oil. Okay. So we're gonna put in some diced onions. Get that little piece of skin out. We're gonna throw in some diced garlic. That'll be smelling good. Oh yeah. Garbanzo beans. Ah. Garbanzo, I love garbanzo beans. Full of protein, good stuff. And some shredded carrots. So obviously, right off the bat, you can see it's got a real pretty color. Yep. And then we'll just put a little pinch of pepper. This is not a spicy salad by any means. A lot of stuff I do is, but this one isn't. So we're gonna kind of toss that around. So we kind of started talking off camera about food and music. Yeah. So let's go there, all right? Because I think that's a great blending of what we do. Well, I kind of brought it up. I said, we could talk about food and bluegrass. And I got thinking, I can't think of any songs. Salty Dog Blues? Nah, that's yeah. not enough. <laughs> but I did, I did think of one. There's a great song by a uh, folk singer who passed away a couple of years ago, a guy named Guy Clark. You familiar with Guy? He's I a am. Texas writer. I am. Wrote L.A. Freeway. Yes, and yes. Great, great songwriter. Yes. He did a song called Homegrown Tomatoes. Really? That everybody <laughs> loves. I've played it on my show a million times, and, <laughs> and uh, I've heard Felder Russian play it, it or play it on his show, but it's a, it's a cool song. <laughs> you know, it's... Wait, I'm going to add in here. This is a little bit of an onion powder just to give a little bit more kind of full flavor. It smells good. But uh, all right, we're getting there now. And then a trick. This is water. Ah. And it'll help get some of that flavor off the pan and give it a nice texture too. So then we throw in some dried cranberries. I love them for color and flavor. Quite a few green onions, just to kind of give some color to mm -hmm. it. And we're gonna put 
I have the cooked quinoa, which you can see over here, it's done. Okay. So that's about as long as it would take. Anybody at home watching, you'll know how to do it. And that's a grain quinoa? It, yeah, it, it's actually, yeah, and it's a, it's a pure starch, and it's absolutely gluten-free, and it's a nice way with the gluten-free society that we're in right. to have something that people can really enjoy. So now we're at a point with this, it is a kale Moroccan salad. So this is all shredded kale, mm -hmm. kind of a bitter green, and I love the flavor of it. So now we can move up, and I'm gonna put the quinoa in at the very end. It doesn't really need to cook anymore. Right. So at this point, we'll take one, one, how cute these are. Oh, I wow. think they just come out too cool. That's all. So it's a, it's a turkey slider with a sweet potato bun. So it's totally healthy. Put them over like wow. this. Then I've got one extra. Guess what? That's you, but let, oh, me, that's make, me. let me make up the, the sauce that we're going to put in there. And at this point in time, I'll add a little bit more of the oil. And watch what happens when we put the water back in. We'll get that going really good. And it'll help to wilt that kale. And you can hear the sizzle starting. Yeah, and you can, that aroma wafts back up when isn't you put it, the water great, in. Isn't it great? Isn't it great? I absolutely love it. Anyhow, so talk about, all right, a lot of people know your show. Yeah. What time? What time does it air, and, and what's going on with that? 8 o'clock on Saturday nights on MPB Think Radio. Prime time. 8 to 10, yeah, it's been in the same slot uh, for 30 years. And uh, like I said, I've hosted the show come May, it'll be 26 years, so... Tune in, 8 o'clock. You, know, you might be the first guest that makes me feel really young. <laughs> <laughs> Been around a while. Uh, that's fantastic. But you know yeah. what? That speaks Tune volumes. In. That speaks volumes, though. All right, so let's go ahead. Here, we're going to move this forward. And what we're going to do is make a little dill Dijon sauce. Okay. Yogurt. Okay, yogurt. fat free yogurt instead of mayonnaise. Not flavored. Not flavored. Plain yogurt. A little bit of Dijon mustard, not too much. We don't need to make it real spicy. Beautiful fresh dill. Mm. It's got to be fresh dill. Dry dill just does not do it. Then a little bit of our minced fresh garlic, and let's start to stir Ooh, that. Wow. This is wonderful because I'm going to yeah, put a little bit of this on so you can actually try that turkey burger. And then just I'm going to put just a, just a pinch of pepper. It doesn't need to be a lot. And a little bit of our onion powder, and we're done. So very simple, and look how easy that was to do. Yeah. So I'm gonna actually let you now give this a try. Put a little touch right on mm. that, and be my guest. All right. Be I my will guest. Absolutely do that. I think it's a, it's a fun test to see if what we make tastes good because it looks good, but I want to be sure that it meets snuff. Mm. Goodness. Isn't that delicious? Wow. Mission accomplished. It's excellent. It awesome. really is. Awesome. Excellent. Well, thank you. So Can here have we another have bite? it. You may have that. <laughs> that whole panty is yours. Look, the staff gets everything else. Wow. So this is, this is for really you. really good. So where we're going to go now, I'm going to actually going to cook that just a little bit more. We're going to throw the quinoa in there, okay? okay? And then it is almost like a, a filler. So this is a nice, hearty meal, but it's totally healthy. And I just love the blend, this salad especially, with that dill. So we're going to take and The sauce that. is excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Put this kind of in the middle. Taste between. that dill. Yeah, fresh dill makes all the difference in the world, you know. So now we've got our three little sliders, that beautiful salad. Let's put this on the side. I garnish it with some beautiful toasted almonds. Those are really healthy for you, too. Mm -hmm. And we'll take a little bit extra of that green onion, put around. 
Now you said and those garbanzo beans have protein. Oh, it's uh, solid protein. What about the almonds? Almonds as well. Almonds are really the, probably the healthiest. So we're going to finish this just like I did yours with a little touch on each one and then a little bit more of the green onion. So now I think what we've found is that we've got a creation here that looks good, that's flavorful, loaded with protein, virtually no fat. Wow. And a really nice, healthy way to eat a burger. Yeah. <laughs> you know, who would have thought? You can look at the plate. I was, I was going to say, I that's a good that. job. That's a good <laughs> it job. It was delicious, Rob. It that's really awesome. was. Well, I tell you what, you know, it, it's fun to have an artist on because truly you are. Well, you truly know, you and, are, sir. Well, but, but music and food and somebody that loves what they do, it's, it's hard to find anything better. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I mean, I love that. That's really what Fit to Eat has become. Your show is just, I mean, legendary. So, you know, what? once again, I'm going to say, if you're interested in any of the recipes you see on today's show, visit our webpage at mpbonline.org slash fit to eat. So obviously, I'd like to thank our guest, Bill Ellison. I'm your host, Rob Stinson. Eat well. <laughs>